Hello everybody, Corey here. We're going to go over the trades and holdings um, for Monday. Is it, it is Monday. Monday, October 7th. Just a reminder, I'm not a qualified licensed investment or financial advisor. I just gather the data and present it to you. Yield max ETFs are extremely risky. Please make sure you've done your due diligence, research these, uh, and read the prospectus. So I did a separate video where I just went over all of the trades from last week um, for Monday through Friday trades due to, you know, work last week. I wasn't able to do any videos. Um, so I did that separate for those that just, you know, wanted to see the trades and what might have been uh, you might have missed or whatever. I did that. And so in this video, we'll just do the trades for today and then go over the holdings. So for those of you that may be new, um, we'll go over these. There'll be an alphabetical order. We'll do the long ETFs and the short ETFs and then Y bit. So please feel free to fast forward. Um, to the uh, ETF you want to look at. Sorry, this is, you know, Monday, but um, sorry, I wasn't able to get you prepared uh, going into today, going into today, knowing all the uh, strike prices and everything. So I apologize for that. Um, but hopefully we'll get it, uh, get all these out and you'll be ready for the rest of the week and know what's going on with these. All right, so Abney, we do have some trades here. And you can see the first two lines. Um, they've closed out the short call and bought call there. And they've done new ones, basically. So we went from a 127 short call to a 133 short call. And as you can see, we closed today at 130.23. Um, so we were above that uh, strike price. And then they did the bulk calls. We went from 131 to a 135. So if we go over and look at our holdings, you can see the 133 short call there, but we also have a 128 short call with 55 contracts. Obviously, we're over this one uh, a couple of percent and a couple of dollars there. For the 133, we are underneath that one 2%. And then we have the bulk call on the majority of the contracts there at the 135, which were underneath 4%. Uh, possible upside for the short calls are looking at about uh, somewhere around 30 cents for the short calls. Again, it's short call only, but because we have a bulk call here, this it can help the stock price go up along with the synthetic. So the only one that we do the upside on for is the uh, short call because that's the only one that we can really look at there. All right, AIYY. We don't have any trades. So we'll just go down here and see where we're at. So we had a short call, <coughs> $23.50. And so we started the week in the hole because it looks like we closed Friday at $24.07. And uh, so we were already over that short call. So we're currently over the short call 3%. But then we have the bulk call with a $25 strike price, but we're underneath that 4%. So no, obviously no upside for the short call here, um, and the stock price could go up based on the market value of the synthetic and the bulk call. And so the 11th is this Friday, so most of these are going to expire on the 11th. However, we do have some, uh, a few short calls and um, quite a bit of synthetics that will be expiring on the 18th, which is next week. So you can see that here with the synthetic with the $25 strike price, and we're underneath that 4%. And uh, I did fix the color codes for the first video of the week 
which has got to be a record because usually I forget the at least the first video of the week. All right, let's see. AMZ is the next one. So we'll go over AMDY here. You see we have the short calls, 167, 50, and 170. So we closed Friday and today, 170, 90s. Um, so we came into this week also underneath uh, or over our strike prices. So the 167.50 and the 170, the contracts are split between these two, and we're above these strike prices two and one percent. And then we have a bought call that's 177.50, and we're underneath that four percent. So that is for the total amount of the short call trades. So the 167.50, we're above that one about 3.50. And we're above the other one, only about a dollar. So no upside here for our short calls. AMZ. So we did have the trade over here. Um, it looks like we've had people buy into AMZ. We got uh, additional 215 contracts for the synthetic and the short call. So if we look at our holdings here, we can see we have two short calls. We have a 185 strike price and a 190 strike price, and we're below these 2 and 5%. So AMZ did go down almost $6 today. Friday, we were at 186.51, so we were over one of those strike prices. Um, well, I say that, but those are from today. That's the trades we just had with the 215. Um... So, the majority of the contracts are at the 190 strike price. Um, possible upside here, we're looking still around 90 cents for that. Then we have our bulk call with the 195 strike price. We're underneath that 9%, 7%, I'm sorry. I was looking at the 9,000 contracts. All right, let's see what we had. So, Mernie is next. So, that's quite a ways. So, let's move on to Appley. We have two short calls, 230, 232.50 strike prices. We're underneath those 4 and 5%. And then we have two bulk calls here. Um, 235 and 237.50. We're below those 6 and 7%. It looks like we have bulk calls... Um, for our most of the short call contracts, uh, the difference it looks like is just 50 contracts there. And then we have synthetics here that expire next week with the 225 strike price. Possible upside here for the short calls. Uh, we're looking at about 61 cents to that 230 strike price. Babu, we have a short call with the 123 strike price. We're underneath that 4%, possible upside of about $1.13. And um, we do not have a bulk call here for Babu. Then we have Coney, three short calls, 175, 177, 50, 180. I'm not sure why coin is going down, why Bitcoin is going up, but it looks like we dropped a couple of dollars today. Um, we're underneath those strike prices, 3, 5, and 6%. Uh, possible upside here, uh, somewhere around 30 cents there. For the short calls, then we have bulk calls here, 190, 192, 50, and 195. We are underneath those 11, 12, and 13 percent. We do not have bulk calls for all of those. So let's look here. So that matches that. So we have bulk calls for about two-thirds of the contracts, 24,860. 
Moving on to Dizzo. So Disney was dropping a day. There was a couple of things. One talking about the hurricanes. And then something else came up. But I didn't hear what they were talking about. If it was anything or not. But we have two short calls. 96 and 97. Strike prices were underneath those. 4 and 5%. Possible upside here. Uh, for that 96. Up to that 96. We're looking at 30 cents a share. Um, contracts are split evenly between these. We do not have a bought call for Dizzo. Phoebe. We have two short calls, 595 and 600. Majority of the contracts are at the $600 strike price. We're underneath those 2 and 3%. Possible upside here, about fifty-one cents for the short call. And then we have a bulk call with a six twenty strike price for the majority of the contracts, and we are underneath that six percent. GDXY, we have a short call with a forty-one dollar strike price. We're underneath that five percent. Possible upside for the short call of eighty-six cents, and no bulk call. GUI, we have a short call with the 170 strike price. We're underneath that 4%. Possible upside for the short call is 62 cents. And then we have the bulk call with the 175 strike price. We're underneath that 7%. And we have that bulk call for the majority of the contracts. JPMO, we have... Two short calls here, a 210 and a 21250. Majority of the contracts are at the 21250 strike price. We did close today at 21093. Um, so we're above the one strike price by 93 cents and we're below the other strike price by 1% or $1.57. Um, so only a few cent possible upside here for the short call. We do not have a bulk call, and the synthetic expires next Friday with the 220 strike price. We're currently underneath that 4%. And then we have Marnie. So we had trades over here. Oh, I did skip Google here. I apologize. Uh, just looks like they got a signed um, for one contract. Uh, but Marnie, so the first three lines. Looks like we've had some people buying in. We have a new 335 contracts for the synthetic and short call. And then the next four lines. So I did not do the color codes on the trades tab. Sorry. Still shows 10, 11 is green. Um, but then the next four lines is where, they're, where they closed out the short call and bulk call that was going to expire this Friday. And they've moved that out to next Friday, the 18th. Uh, so we went from a $64 strike price to a $62 strike price uh, for our short calls. And then for the bulk call, we went from a 68 to a 66 Oof. So if we look here, we just have an absolute mess. Um, so let's just start. We have our synthetic with an $80 strike price, which expires next Friday. And we're underneath that 27%. Then we have four short calls that are going to expire this Friday. 62, 64, 65, and 66. We're below those 5, 8, 10, and 11%. The majority of the contracts are at the $64 strike price. And possible upside, looking at that strike price, around 40 cents. We also have a short call for next week with the 62 strike. Uh, for 690 contracts. Um, so an upside there, a few cents for that short call. Then we have a bulk call for this that expires this week with a 68 strike. We're underneath that 14%. And 
And then a bulk call for next week with the 66 strike and underneath that 11%. So lots of things going on here with Murney and none of them seem to be helping. But you never know the day that something's going to, some news story's going to come out and this thing's going to pop up. So it's a good thing that they have the bulk calls here. Uh, of course, it's not on all of them now that I look at it. Um, we have bought calls a little over about almost 3,200 to the 4,000 contracts. So about, um, somewhere around 77% of the short calls. All right. So I don't know what we had next for trades. So we have the new Palantir is next. Uh, but we have MSFO here. So we have a short call with the 425 strike price. We're underneath that 4% possible upside here of about 70 cents for the short call. Then we have a bought call with the 432.50 strike price. We are underneath that 5%. It looks like Microsoft actually went down about six and a half dollars today. Then we have Misty here with a short call expiring this week with 182.50 strike price. So we are over that 2%. So no upside here for um, Misty for the short call. And there's no bought call. And MicroStrategy went up to $192 today um, at one point. So I don't quite know why we don't have a bought call on this one. Um, I know I looked at this this morning. I ended up selling the shares that I could sell without causing a wash sale or whatever. Um, but, yeah, this sucks. Anyway, moving on. We have Nephli here. We have a short call with a 727.50 strike price. We're underneath that 4% because Netflix looks like it dropped about $18 today or almost. Uh, possible upside here of about $0.60. Cents. We do not have a bought call for Nephli. Then we have NVIDI. We have two short calls, 123 and 127. NVIDIA closed at 127.72. So we are above both of these strike prices by 4% and 1%. The majority of the contracts are at the 127 strike price, which were over 72 cents. There's 89,000 contracts there. Now, we also have a bought call for those 89,000 contracts with the 131 strike price, but we're underneath this 3% currently. All right, then we have OARC, short call 46.50. We're underneath that 1% or 59 cents, possible upside here of about 13 cents for OARC, no bulk call. Then we have our brand new um, PLTY, uh, underlying is Palantir. Uh, so you can see here, I know somebody pointed out earlier that um, on Yieldmax's website, they have Palantir or PLTY as uh, with the NAV of $20. My guess is that's just a template that they usually start with and they didn't update it from 20 to 50 because as you can see here, the NAV is $50. Which is sort of crazy when you look at it, right? Because Palantir is not even $50. Heck, as of today, it's not even $40. Um, so that's going to be a little odd. But uh, we have our short call here of $40.50. And we're currently underneath that 4%. And then, of course, we have the synthetics here with the expiration of December, and they have a $39 strike price. So, 
the trades are actually here. So if you want to see the data for the trades there and the cost of those. And next we have PayPay here with two short calls, $79 strike price and 80. And we are above the 79, 2%, and we are above the 80, 26 cents. The majority of the contracts are at the $79 strike price. So we are maxed out here. There are no bought calls and no upside for the short calls. SMCY. So I found this odd. Um, all right. I don't know what they did here. Because they only have a synthetic for 880 contracts. They already had a short call and a bulk call with 880 contracts. And then they did a their trades show uh, another short call. So my guess is this one was supposed to be closed out. In order to open this one. So. But it's not on. The trades are not on here. Um, or they didn't send those trades to the custodian. Because they're still here on. You know sometimes we get the trades from the website. And then the holdings will say something different. And that's just because. You know, they've updated the trades since then and, you know, what they put on the website versus went to the custodian were two different things, right? But in this case, you can see that what the custodian got was what we got because it's showing the adding those short calls but not taking away any. So, assuming these are closed out and these are the new ones, yeah, I don't know if that's right or not. I don't know if that would be right there with that. Right now, I have a paste value, so the formulas aren't there. Maybe it's just because it seems like it's a big number and it's that way, but this is also a $55 stock, um, which, by the way, if anybody noticed, it went up $6 today. <laughs> um, SMCY did. Well, I guess both of them did. Um, SMCY went up $6 and I don't know, what, 17 cents or something. And SMCI went up six dollars and fifty one cents. Let's see, next trades are Tesla. All right, so then we have Snowy here with a short call with a one sixteen strike price underneath that two percent possible upside of thirty one cents for the short call. There is not a bulk call, but we do have a synthetic that expires next week with the one twenty strike price. And we are underneath that 5%. Then we have Squee here with two short calls. Yeah, that's wrong. I somehow did not catch that. Let me see. Well. Good thing I saved that data earlier. I don't know if I was looking for this. Sorry. Yeah, it's hard typed. All 
All right. So, squee. We have two short calls, $67 and $68 strike price. Uh, we're below those 2 and 3%. Which is funny because on Friday we were above that one, the 67, which is also where the majority of the contracts are. Possible upside there of 33 cents for the short call. Then we have a bought call uh, with the $71 strike price. And we're underneath that 7%. And that is for the majority of the contracts. And then we have Tesla. So let's look at our trades. Looks like people are buying in. So we have 1,400 more contracts for our synthetic short and bulk calls. So if we look here, we have three short calls that expire this week. 255, 270, and 272.50. Um, the majority of the contracts are at the 270 strike price. Of course, Tesla dropped over $9 today. Um, we do have this bulk call here, but it's only for those 1,400 contracts at the 267.50 strike price which were under 10%. So we really want to get up to that 270 where we're, but we're 11% under that. Uh, but that's where the 29,000 contracts are, uh, which would bring up, uh, you know, possible upside there of about $1.22 for those short calls. And let's see what other trades we had. TSMY looks like people closed out of this one because uh, you can see the quantity 65 for everything, so they closed out 65 contracts. So TSMY we have a short call with 182.50 strike price, which were over by one percent or two dollars and one cent. So no upside there for the short call, but we do have a bought call here with a 187.50 strike price. We're underneath that 2% or $3. Um, we do have a bought call here for about 80% of the contracts. We are in the negative with the cash and the money market account. Negative two hundred and forty nine thousand dollars. Just happen to see that. All right. Zomo here. They closed out. Um, so they had a short call with the one twenty three strike price. You can see today we closed at one twenty five thirty seven. So they closed out this short call and then moved up to a 129 strike price. And then they closed out the bot call that they had with the 126 strike price. All right. So uh, we can see here we have 129 strike price. We're underneath that 3% possible upside here of about 50 cents for Zomo and no bought call. Oh, sorry. Drop my pen. So we don't have any trades on any of the short ETFs. So let's just run through these real quick. So crash here, we can see, uh, you know, we have expiration here for short calls and bought, I mean short put and bought put for this week. Uh, short puts we have 227.50 and 240 which we're really close to that. Uh, we're only a few cents away. For the 227.50 we are above that six percent. Then we have our synthetics that expire next week. Um, and as you can see, we're above those 17%. And the long call also expires next week. 
All right, and then we have dips here with the short put expiring this week with the 119 strike price. We're above that 7%. And then we have the synthetic that expires next week with the 107 strike price. We are above that 19%. And that's only for 35 contracts. The rest of the contracts uh, for the synthetic don't expire until November. Fiat, we have two short puts, 157.50 and 160. We're above those 6 and 7%. And then next week, we have our synthetic and long calls expiring. Uh, synthetic 150 strike, we're above that 13%. YQQ. Q, two short puts, 467 and 473. We're above those 2 and 3%. And then we have a long call that expires next week with a 620 strike price. And, um, yeah, we're under that 22%. As you can see, these long calls aren't really worth anything. Um, and then, last here. We have YBIT. So it looks like somebody's bought into these. I don't I don't get the YBIT one. Um, I don't know. It's probably why a lot of people don't get a lot of the other ones. But uh, yeah, YBIT just, I don't know, hasn't done as good as the other ones out there. But anyway, YBIT, 1100 quantity here. Uh, Buy-in for our synthetic short call bought calls. So... If we look here, we have two short calls that expire this Friday, seventeen fifty. We're over that by three percent or fifty three cents, and then we have a short call with the eighteen strike price, and we're above that one three three cents. Majority of the contracts are at the seventeen fifty strike price. We closed Friday at 1777 and we closed today at 1803. We do have three bulk calls, 1850, 19, and 1950 strike prices. We're currently under those three, five, and eight percent. I don't know why those are green. My guess is going to be I copied these from the wrong thing. Let me look at something. I guess is hmm. sorry I guess I should do this later so I don't have a bought call or at least I don't remember seeing it let's see yeah, so I guess when I did my formulas, I forgot to go down to YBIT and change its formulas. Sorry, I just know if I don't do it now, I won't remember later. And then we'll have the same issue another time. And I don't know how I'm just now catching it. There we go. That looks more like it. Okay, I did that on my other 
my template copy. All right, so no upside here for the short calls uh, because we're above our strike prices. And we don't have any uh, options, contracts in YMAG or YMAX. All right, and then I for did forget to mention here, YBIT has a synthetic that expires next Friday with a $26 strike price. And we're currently underneath that 31%. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.